When did Space School decide to start a cooking club for kids who've never even held a ladle? Uh, it may not be rocket science, but honestly, it might go better if it were. As we follow the kids' culinary developments, we'll also discuss cell development. As a quick reminder, during embryonic development, mitosis produces identical stem cells that contain the same DNA. However, as you are probably aware, humans aren't homogenous blobs of identical cells. By the time embryonic development is complete, most stem cells have turned into neurons, blood cells, liver cells, bone cells. You get the point. Stem cells are able to transform into these highly specialized structures by turning on and off specific genes, which is all dictated by the cellular materials they're exposed to early on. Anyways, this sketch won't deal with any of that super complicated gene regulation stuff, but we will cover the general stages in which cells become specialized, a process creatively called specialization. A glance at those ingredients tells me these kids have decided to do some kind of baking even if they haven't the slightest idea beyond that. The options are limitless. Nothing's been mixed, so this indecisive crew can pivot from cakes to pie to cookies on a whim, which is exactly like a cell in the specification stage of development. Specification, symbolized by this specify temp reminder on the oven, is the first stage of specialization. A cell enters specification once it's made the decision, so to speak, to develop into a specific kind of cell, like a neuron or a muscle cell. But nothing is set in stone at this point because everything is reversible, just like how these kids still have the option to put the sugar away and make broccoli casserole instead. Moving along, looks like this young baker has wisely used a cookbook to find some inspiration. That dessertmination cookbook should make you think of determination, the next step of cell specialization. Determination occurs once a cell has committed to its particular path by physically doing something to move forward in that direction, like turning specific genes on and off. There's no going back at this point. They have passed go, collected $200, crossed the Rubicon, kind of like this chef who has committed to making a dessert by blending her ingredients. Those eggs certainly won't uncrack. And have you ever tried to uncream sugar and butter? <laughs> yeah. Now, determination can occur via two processes. A cell's gene regulation can be influenced by the unequal division of the cellular goods, like proteins and mRNA, during cleavage, much like the unequal distribution of sprinkles in the batter in this pan. Or gene regulation can be influenced by chemicals released from neighboring cells, Sort of like this chef is influencing the outcome of her friend's cupcakes by making them chocolate chip. This sort of cellular peer pressure occurs due to chemical influencers called morphogens. Hey, uh, you, stem cell, you don't really want to be a bone cell, right? You know the muscle crew's where it's at, yeah? Yeah? Anywho, raw batter may be delicious, but it's no true cupcake until it's baked. It's the same with a cell. During determination, like batter, a cell has all the right parts in the right ratios, but it's not functional yet. Cue the baking. The chef protecting himself with those two different oven mitts symbolizes differentiation, the final stage of cell specialization. By the end of differentiation, a cell has all the structures and biochemical components it needs to be a fully functional version of its chosen cell type, just like how baking turns this batter into delicious, fully formed cupcakes. Okay, that covers the major stages of cell specialization. Now, let's talk about potency. Potency is the ability of a stem cell to turn into different types of cells. And as a general trend, the farther a cell gets along its specialization path, the less potent it becomes. In terms of potency, a cell can either be totipotent, pluripotent, or multipotent. Let's see what's cooking at the front of the class for more details. This total chef is totally on top of his game. He symbolizes a totipotent cell, which you may also hear as an omnipotent cell. And just like he can make anything with that collection of pots and pans, totipotent stem cells can develop into any type of cell. All embryonic stem cells and cells in the specification and early determination stages fall into this category, which is why this chef is on the same side of the room as the kids in the back 
gathering and mixing ingredients. Once differentiation begins, though, the final options are slightly restricted. This gal stirring a pot of water with a pea-handled spoon represents pluripotency. Pluripotent stem cells lack the ability to become extra embryonic structures, such as the placenta, but they can become any cell type inside the body, which is similar to how this chef still has a lot of options in terms of what she can put into that pot. Pretty sure she won't be making a quiche in there, but anything boiled, uh, oatmeal, boiled cabbage, instant ramen, they're all still on the table. Or soon to be on the table. The, uh, the See the difference may be false advertising when it comes to killing germs, but this bottle of triple power germicidal cleaner should help you remember that pluripotency begins when stem cells start to differentiate into the three germ layers. These germ layers form the basis for all tissues in the body, but we'll leave those details for another sketch. As differentiation continues, many cells become committed to joining a certain cell group, which further decreases their potency. At this stage, stem cells are considered multipotent, which you can remember from this multicolored pasta. Multipotent stem cells make up the majority of adult stem cells. Multipotent cells are locked into becoming cells within a particular cell family. For example, an embryonic stem cell that has jumped on the hematopoietic bandwagon can only turn into some sort of blood cell after that. Its muscle-bound ship has sailed. Which is kind of like how the decision to add noodles at this point has locked these kids on the pasta train. But whether the final dish ends up as Alfredo or Bolognese or mac and cheese, ooh, mac and cheese, mm, it, that's still up in the air. Just like we are. Which reminds me that I haven't eaten anything but freeze-dried cheese in weeks. Uh, let's run through the recap so I can get my hands on some of those sweet, sweet carbs. Cell specialization involves three main stages of development. Specification, determination, and differentiation. With each stage, a cell becomes increasingly more committed to a particular final role. During specification, a cell starts along the path to becoming a certain type of cell but everything is reversible and the cell retains limitless potential. Once determination occurs, the cell is committed to a given path. Determination either results from unequal distribution of cellular materials during cell division or from the chemical influence of neighboring cells. Differentiation, the final stage of specialization, is when a cell develops the structure and function of its final form. This stage begins during gastrulation and the development of the germ layers. As specialization of stem cells increases, potency decreases. Totopotency is seen during specification and early determination. Totopotent cells have no limitations at all on what type of cell they can become. By the start of differentiation, cells are considered pluripotent. Pluripotent cells can turn into any cells in the body, but not placental cells, which are extra embryonic. As differentiation continues, and a cell starts along the path for a specific cell lineage, it's considered multipotent, meaning it's limited to becoming only some cell within that family. And I'm not quite sure why gravity only acts on delicious baked goods around here, but I'm just grateful those cupcakes aren't floating away. I'm thinking I'll spend less time contemplating the physics of the kitchen and more time stuffing my face. <laughs> See ya.